One of the most important things to ensure your aquarium is healthy is monitoring water parameters. But a big problem people face is not knowing when things are going wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily measure your tank water using the 7-in-1 aquarium monitor, which will constantly keep track of all the parameters in your tank and make sure everything runs normally. We're going to be going over all the important stuff you need to know about water parameters, should it be a certain way, how do you know when there's issues, and reasons why this product is super good to help keep your aquarium stable. Before I continue, I want to thank today's sponsor, Cactoily, for sponsoring this video and sending me their product. We're going to start off by talking about water parameters in general. Water parameters, in simple terms, are measurements that define the quality of your aquarium water. They directly affect the fish's health because obviously they live their whole lives underwater, so it's very important that you keep the water suitable. Different aquarium fish require different pH, GH, KH, temperature, and measuring tank water allows you to determine whether the water is suitable for the fish and also whether or not you need to change things up. To give an example, we'll take a look at pH and temperature. These two are the primary tank parameters people look at, and they have the most impact on fish. So the majority of tropical fish live in temperatures of around 74 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 to 28 degrees Celsius, and a pH of about 7.5 to 7.8. These are the typical conditions for the majority of tropical fish. Some are going to like the temperature higher or the pH higher or vice versa, depending on what you have. And that's a key point when doing research, is knowing what water conditions your fish are going to need. Point is, water parameters are important to know for the well-being of your fish, especially temperature and pH, and it's important that you're able to monitor and keep parameters at a healthy level. And that's where the Cactoily 7-in-1 monitor comes in, where you can easily manage all the water parameters in your tank in one place. Now we're going to unbox the monitor, we'll see what's in the package and how we can set it up. So this is the monitor guide, it tells you everything you need to know about the monitor itself. They also include a water quality guidebook, and it gives you info about stuff like temperature, salinity, stuff like that. It tells you everything you need to know about aquarium water. This thing tells you how to put the probe in the tank as well as the ideal water levels. This right here is a floating ring that was sent to me along with the product. You could use it to help float the probe inside the tank. Now we have the Cactoli monitor itself. This is the device that is actually going to show the pH, salinity, temperature, TDS, all the useful measurements. It's going to show on this monitor once we get it connected and the cables plugged in. The package does include suction cups which you could anchor the probe on the glass. We also got some plugs and this stuff is just used to connect all this to a power source. We also have this box and inside the box there's cords, charger adapters, some other accessories including stuff that is going to be going on the probe to keep it on the glass. And finally, there are these small bags that are pH buffers. It's going to have pHs of different levels. You put it into a cup of water and you use it to calibrate the probe. So it is recommended to calibrate the probe once every six months or so to make sure that the readings are accurate. This whole system is incredibly simple. It's just a monitor and a probe. You plug both of them in and it works just like that. And now we have the probe that's going to go in. It does have a protector cap at the bottom that you have to remove once you put it in. It also indicates where the max water level should be once it's put into the tank. With the setup you could see right here we have the probe in the water reaching the max level. With anchoring it there's basically two ways you could use the floating ring that I showed or you could use the suction cups to attach onto the glass. We're going to use the suction cups and with these you could just slide them in and they should fit perfectly. So it's very simple, the setup is very easy. You have to first put the suction cups to the holder and then you slide the holder in. And here you have the Cactoily monitor. It's really that simple. Also there are two charging cables, so you will have to charge both of them in. The charging cable connected to the readings are gonna be able to see the values from the probe. Now with the monitor connected and in the water, we can see all the parameters it displays. Now I'm gonna go over some key water parameters that you should know about. I'll start off with pH. The higher it is, the more alkaline it is, and the lower it is, the more acidic it is. The majority of aquarium fish do good in a pH of around 6.5 to 8, but it really depends on the type of fish that you are keeping because some species are going to prefer a low water hardness while others are going to like water that's high. So examples of fish that would do well in high pH would be guppies and harlequin rasboras. These fish usually do better when the water hardness is higher, especially live bears in general because they breed a lot better when the water is hard around 7.4 to 8. 
The pH of this tank is around 8 to 8.1, so it is in the higher range, but the water hardness is completely safe for the fish that I'm keeping in there, which are basically harlequin rasboras and some endlers, and they've been doing well. The most important thing about pH is keeping it steady, because most of the time if you go a little bit over or a little bit under, as long as they were introduced correctly, acclimated right, and you keep those parameters stable, which is far more important than a bit of pH inaccuracies, your tank is going to be perfectly healthy. So in many cases it's more about stability instead of the exact pH level. Some common ways of lowering the pH are adding botanicals and also doing water changes. Doing water changes to lower pH is only going to work if the water that you add has a lower pH than the existing tank water. Botanicals work great because stuff like Indian almond leaves are going to release a lot of tannins. These things are going to help create a more acidic environment. Now the Cactoy monitor also monitors the temperature. I think it's great because that means you don't even need a thermometer in the tank. But I think that's really cool, you could just look at it, you don't have to look at the thermometer readings, it tells you exactly what the temperature is. To the right you can see it gives you the TDS, so TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. Basically it measures the dissolved solids that are in the water. This could be organic material like minerals and salt. Typical TDS range for freshwater fish is around 100 to 400 ppm. Again, this varies depending on what you keep. So at the top left, we have ORP. This is basically the general quality of the water. Typical range is around 200 to 400, so this is a bit on the higher end. At the top right, it displays the pH and the temperature. At the bottom, it displays the salinity percentage, the TDS, specific gravity, and the EC, which is electrical conductivity. With the temperature, it does allow you to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, or from Celsius to Fahrenheit, depending on what you use. And again, I would say the main parameters you should look out for are temperature and pH. The TDS, which is total dissolved solids, can also be important in a lot of cases. Reverse osmosis water, which is RO water, is extremely pure water with almost all minerals and salts removed. That's going to affect the TDS because it's going to drop it by a lot. The TDS is a significant factor in breeding certain aquarium fish, and stuff like RO water has really low TDS. And a lot of sensitive fish and shrimp prefer a low TDS, hence the RO water. So this Cactoily 7-in-1 aquarium monitor is really good in that it tracks the necessary water parameters 24-7. As long as it's plugged in, it's going to show the water parameters of your tank. It's a very useful tool to have if you guys are breeding a certain fish where you need to monitor the pH, salt, stuff like that, then I think this is great. Otherwise, if you're keeping fish that are sensitive and are very specific with water conditions, I would recommend this as well. If you're a beginner, this is a great tool to track all the water parameters. It saves you lots of time and money from the pH tests and all the other stuff that you have to do if you didn't have this. It's kind of an all-in-one monitor, tracks everything all at once, and it's a great tool to have. Link to the Cactoli monitor is in the description and comments, so be sure to check that out. There's also a discount code provided to get a 15% discount on this. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.